Hi everyone, it's Mark here, founder of the Arts and Culture Network. It's time for another Arts and Culture Hot Top 10 with one of our full members, and I'm delighted that Farah has joined us. Hi, Farah. Hi, Mark. <laughs> She's really, really worried about what I'm going to ask. It's hilarious. <laughs> I love doing this without giving our members any warning because it's so it's it's lovely to see people squirm. <laughs> That's not no. fair, Mark. <laughs> so I've got a list of um arts and culture categories and I'd like I'm going to ask Farah to let us know if she may not have so if she has um, a favorite in in these categories and if so why because what we can do is read between the lines it tells us a little bit about more about you and um and it's always good fun so are you ready I am <laughs> okay up first do you have a favorite building and if so why Oh gosh, um, I'm a huge fan of architecture, so it's going to be hard to narrow down. Um, okay, I have to say, what comes to mind is Sagrada Familia in Barcelona. Um, I'm a huge fan of Gaudi, and I've been to Barcelona a number of times, and I just love it. I love that building. It's just so iconic, and um, it's been really nice to be able to, because there's a charity going on, because it's still um, a work in progress, so it's really wonderful that you can um, donate. So then you're a part of the building. So I've done that as well. But outside is amazing. Inside is mesmerizing because of the stained glass windows. Mm -hmm. So you have, um, you know, green, shades of green, shades of blue, shades of red. Oh, my God, it's magical. So, yeah, it, that is. Yeah, that is the one that I would pick. Great. Right. Excuse me one second. The dog is making a noise and trying to come in. So no we'll problem. Right. This is an informal chat, as you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, right. <laughs> be good. Sit down and be good. Right. Next up, do you have a favorite book? Oh gosh, how can you how can you choose a book? That's the problem. There's Which, so well, okay. Let's make it a bit easier. What book have you reread the most? Again, um, okay. Can I give you a couple? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay I mean growing up one of the authors that hit me really hard was Maya Angelou mm -hmm. I know why the cage bird sing it was just so moving to hear what she had gone through um so it was very very moving and then also while I was growing up one of the things that hit me most was um 1984 by um yeah so George Ooh. Orwell and then I read most of his books so it was just I was just fascinated by his um his vision and everything um it was just amazing and obviously you know Shakespeare and Jane Austen all that and they're, they're all there but it's hard to pick so if you're going to make me pick then I'll have to pick those two <laughs> okay. there's a wonderful documentary on BBC iPlayer at the moment about George Orwell uh -huh. yeah, it's really good thank you for that that's great mm -hmm. and do you have a favorite dancer or dance group oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> um no I, I mean I, I love dance it's enjoy actually mostly when I'm dancing so <laughs> yeah so it's you you are your favorite dancer. yeah yeah I mean um I think is it diversity the mm -hmm. recent the you know contemporary dance that they were always fun to watch yeah. so maybe I'll just mention them and then we can move on to the next question please that's fine <laughs> um they did the pantomime here at home and I managed to get them, my family backstage to meet them all, and we, that was great fun. Um, oh, good! I think, oh, I think yeah. Gordon lives in this area, which is of Essex. So oh, good. wonderful! Yeah, that's great. Mm. Um, now, this is fun. Um, if you were exiled from both your country of birth and your current country of residence, wow! And had to choose a destination based on its culture, mm -hmm. which country would you like to live in? Oh my God, there's so many. Um, there's so many. Can I choose two? Yes. Okay, all right. Sorry, I just can't choose one. I mean, there's many I choose from, but two that come to mind. One is um, Morocco, because I just came back from an amazing trip in Northern Morocco. And the culture is fascinating. The history is incredible. The people are so kind i don't think i've been anywhere i have to say where every single city that we were in we were warmly welcomed kindness just so friendly so 
I'd have to say for, instance, for now Morocco and then the other place would be um, the Maldives purely because when I was there what I saw underwater was just mesmerizing and all I wanted to do was just stay there we had a house reef and the colors the the range of just stunning marine life was breathtaking I'm dying to go back um if I hadn't if I had um if I could I'd just be there the whole time honestly it was just incredible so yeah two different environments but yeah those are the two I'll go with at the moment <laughs> yeah love it um now as a spectator or a participant do you have a favorite sport <laughs> <laughs> um a favorite sport you're oh God, these questions mark honestly um yeah no but I'm not a sports person but if I had to say if I had to choose one it'd probably be football because um I don't even know if I should mention who I support because right now it's terrible but I'm a Spurs supporter from yeah from childhood um so yeah football I'd have to say then and I have played okay. football not good at it but I have played it so it's fun to play you know um but yeah so can we move on to the next question please <laughs> <laughs> can we finish now please <laughs> yeah, yeah finish that please <laughs> um and if you could only listen to one musical genre for the rest of your life which would it be oh gosh M oh I know this is painful but I love all genres from classical to hip-hop to rock um if it was one genre, then it'd have to be rock, I think. Okay. Yeah, it'd have to be rock. I mean, I am very deeply connected to music from all genres. I get goosebumps, which shows you instantly how connected you are to music. It's mm. very, it evokes emotion, it evokes memories. Um, but yeah, if I had to choose one, it would be rock. And there are so many bands under that genre. Yeah. But um, yeah, but I love all genres, but yeah. Okay, we'll go with rock. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Supplementary question. Oh. Is there an artist, a musical artist, who you really regret not seeing live? Prince. No, actually. I did. No, no, no. I have seen Prince live. Sorry. Um, who I haven't seen recently. Um, okay. Oh, I mean, yeah, I have seen George Michael live, but when he was very early, his early days. And I really regret not seeing George Michael um, recently before he mm. passed. So yeah, yeah, probably I'd have to say George Michael. Don't let the sun go down on me live when he says, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Elton John, that would have been a concert to be at, wouldn't it? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. That would have been fun, yeah. definitely. Uh, and what's what what's, um, what did you last listen to? Can you remember what 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 artist or band it would be in your if you did a Spotify. What did I listen to the most over the last year? Who would it be? Do you think? You know what, Mark? I, there's just so many to choose. My Spotify is so diverse. There's so many lists. I, I, I mean, I was listening to you two a lot recently. Um, this morning, I was listening to Andrea Bocelli and Sarah Brightman. Um, mm. uh, yeah, you know, um, time to say goodbye. Yeah. um that's such a moving moving piece um I love Andrew Bocelli's work anyway but have you um, seen the um video on YouTube um Portofino his live performance in Portofino I have yeah I have. isn't it yeah. David yeah. Costa yeah yeah so yeah. yeah and working with Andrew Bocelli is on my list of people um in terms well, of the aspects yeah yeah no it's on it's, it's gonna happen Mark I'll let you know <laughs> excellent mm, mm. <laughs> um and uh, Obviously, present company accepted. Um, who is your favourite visual artist or who has influenced you the most? <laughs> oh, again, this is quite hard for me. All right. Please <laughs> note, it's very difficult to choose. Um, the, I mean, there are so many, um, but if, because I love surrealism, um, I, you know, Dali is just incredible. Bosch is just bonkers. Mm. to think that he painted all of that he did in the 16th century mm. it's just incredible um it would probably be um someone like Kandinsky who embraced abstract art and and started the movement I'd say um from my perspective because at the end of the day there's variations of who 
who was supposed to have started um, the abstract movement, but I, I Kandinsky moved me a lot when I first started to look at his work and pieced things together. Um, so Kandinsky, Surat, um, uh, because of the pointillism. But yeah, I know you want me to pick one, so I'll have to pick Kandinsky. <laughs> I have a Kandinsky story then. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Um, I used to work for a, a, a lovely elderly lady who was a former soprano and she lived at number one Grosvenor Square. So she was next door to the American embassy and her mother was a really good concert pianist and her father was a very astute art collector uh, called Marcus Misner and her mother was Felicia Blumenthal and he um, he died in, 19, in 1994 but um, in the early part of his career, he used to bail out struggling artists in return for their paintings. Oh. And it included Kandinsky, wow. Klimt, Chagall, Mondrian. Mm. And um, when he died, he donated his collection to the, the Tel Aviv Museum of Modern Art, um, wow. who had to build a new wing for, to house the collection. Oh, my gosh. Incredible. I mean, it was my first meeting with her. I sat down in her front room where she had two full-size grand pianos and two Chagalls on the wall. Oh. <laughs> and, it was just, and the Chagall story is another one because um, one of the paintings hadn't been signed. Um, and just before he died, um, Marcus and Felicia and Annette travelled to St Paul de Vence to visit him, to ask him to sign the painting. And um, he was so delighted to see them, he gave them another one. Oh my gosh, that was worth the trip. <gasps> wow. 14th, 14th, I know it's not about the value or the price, but at the time he was the 14th most valuable artist in the world. Incredible. Yeah. Anyway, wow. I digress. Now, this is the one you didn't want to do. Oh, this... <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have a favorite play or musical? All right. Okay. Um, I've been to many shows and I love the theater, I do enjoy it all. Um, but probably the one that kind of like hit me hardest in terms of just pure joy is, okay, don't, you know, don't be surprised, but it's We Will Rock You. Um, Love it. It's not there anymore, which is a real shame, um, based on Queen, their story. Yeah. And also it was actually so fun. You've seen it, I take it. No, I haven't. Oh, I know, but... I, I know where it was, and that had that lovely statue of Freddie Mercury outside the theatre. Yeah, but yeah. the story is really funny because it's about a videotape, and it's just so it, it's uh, it's really well written. The music was amazing, and then this was one show where everybody was um, encouraged to dance in the aisles and just join in, which was brilliant. Which I know recently uh -huh. that's been an issue. I won't go into that detail, <laughs> and I totally respect that. But this is a different, it was a different show. But it, I mean, I loved the music by Queen. And I, after that, after seeing that, I got into Queen even more. Um, but yeah, no, I'd probably have to say We Will Rock You. That's fine. <laughs> Queen, Queen also hold the record for the highest number of sales for any album ever. Oh. And it was their greatest hits. It was the mm. biggest selling album of all time. Brilliant. Well um, favorite film, please. <gasps> Okay, this is going to shock you, okay? Everyone who knows me knows my answer straight away to this question. My favourite film is Aliens. Okay. Not the, the, I love the first one, but it's the second one, directed by James Cameron. And Sigourney it's... Sigourney Weaver, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So her character, Ripley, is my alter ego. So everyone okay. knows me if I go into Ripley mode and then... Because I love the fact that she was the heroine the hero, the one who, you know, um, saved it, well, you know, basically was survived to the end. And then in Aliens had the girl with her as well. Mm. You know, an absolute badass, but I love that film. It has all aspects to keep you gripped. It was so well written, so well directed, so well acted in. Um, and it was just fascinating. When I first saw it, I've probably seen it about 20 times. But yeah, Aliens is my favourite film. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to watch it again tonight while I'm working. Yeah, yeah. I um, love all films. I love all kinds of films and I'm a film buff. But if you had to ask me, that's my favourite one. Okay, brilliant. I love that. We haven't had that one before. That's a good one. Good. <laughs> um, and we, uh, apart from me, uh, what was the last thing to make you laugh? 
Oh, bless. <laughs> so I am a huge, huge um, advocate and fan of stand-up comedy. So um, recently I went to a show and I mean, I've been to shows, you know, for decades, small ones, big ones, all kinds of stand-up shows. Um, and there's just so many comedians out there that, that crack you up. But um, the, the com my favorite comedians are people like Shazi Mirza, Gina Yashere, Imran Youssef, um, and among many, you know, like Mickey Flanagan and all, the, um, all those ones as well. But yeah, the last thing that made me laugh, I'm just trying to think, because um, I'm laughing all the time, Mark. So <laughs> I know, we can tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, actually, I'll tell you why. Me spotting what you're wearing underneath your <laughs> <Yes>. suit. <laughs> yeah, for the benefit of those who... Uh, <laughs> and I'm wearing shorts today because it's a lovely warm day, but I've, I've got my newsreader top half on. Yeah. And my beach bottom half on. I'm not going to show anyone anything, but um, I had to stand up a moment ago when we were chatting and um, and uh, Sarah said, have you got shorts on for this interview? So, yeah, so it was you. I know you said apart from you, but I'm going to just say you. <laughs> I know, that's fine. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Farah. Um, let's, uh, uh, let's quickly do our this or that game. Okay. okay. You have to answer as quickly as possible. You can only choose one. Okay. Just gonna, all right, I'll, I'll try, I'll coffee. try. I'm getting in the mode, okay. Right. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Radio or TV? TV. Heels or trainers? Trainers. <laughs> car or motorcycle? Ooh, car. Comedy or horror? Comedy. Concert or sports stadium? Concert. <laughs> Cat or dog? Dog. Library or museum? Museum. Beethoven or Mozart? Beethoven. Shower or bath? Shower. Indoors or outdoors? Outdoors. Early morning or early hours? Early morning. Messy or tidy desk? Tidy desk. Red or white wine? I don't drink. <laughs> Batman or Superman? Superman. <laughs> Numbers or words? Words. Rare or well done? Rare. Mild or spicy? Spicy. <laughs> Opera or chamber music? Um, chamber music. And finally, black or white? White. Nice. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> The feedback we've had is that this is a lovely way of people getting to know you. And, and, and so it's lovely to do. Thank you so much for doing all those. Oh, my pleasure. Um, and for anyone who wants to find out more about the work that Farah does as an artist, an educator, and fascinatingly, a colour energy specialist, <laughs> that all the links will be below. So Farah, thank you so much for doing this and also for being such a valued member of our community. Oh, it's all my pleasure and it's always a joy talking to you and thanks for this wonderful experience, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> my pleasure.